Marsha Feynman. Hit the nail on the head, and that's why I'm here today. I taught in California schools for 24 years. I know how much we need money for schools, but I came here today. Hold up that sign. Tax the rich and their corporations because they can pay and they are not paying. Meanwhile, I'm glad the California Teacher Association, which I am a member of, is sending people here to get money for schools. But if they are just going to limit it to asking for tax extensions, that's not going to work. Because what has just happened? They have cut community colleges $400 million. Fees are increased more than 38%. State universities have been cut $500 million, 8% tuition increase. University of California, $500 million cut, 10% tuition increase. K-12 schools, flat funding, rising needs. Medi-Cal, $1.7 billion cut. CalWORKs, $1.5 billion cut. Child care and child development, $750 million cut. In-home support services, $486 million cut. Are we going to let that stand? No. no! But this is what's happening. When the teachers come and demand the tax extensions, that will keep the schools at the present pathetic level of funding, and all these other cuts are going to stand. So I'm a teacher, and I taught for 24 years. Healthy families is being cut so that they take vision care away from children. Medi-Cal is being cut so that people lose any dental coverage. So you're a teacher, and the kids come to school, and they can't get glasses, and they can't get their teeth fixed. What the heck are you going to do in that classroom with those kids? We need everything. We need to... Re we need to restore all of the cuts. We need to make sure the kids not only go to elementary school and high school, but can go to community college for free, like it says in the master plan, so that they can go to state university and UC Berkeley for free, like, it's, like California promises. And the only way we can do that is to tax the vast wealth that exists in this country, not give breaks to Larry Ellison of Oracle, not let the yachts come into San Francisco and give away the store to them. Not to build fancy stadiums, but to have real taxation so that we can have real jobs for people, so that we can have real schools for people to go to, so that we can provide real health care, real housing, and we can only do that if we get the wealth that we ourselves have worked to produce. And that's another thing you need to remember. We're not asking for a handout. We have made this wealth. It didn't fall out of the sky into their hands. It's not their God-given right to have this wealth. It's our wealth, and we need to take it and use it for the benefit of society. Yeah. Yeah. Become permanently disabled. That's what happens. If you're injured and you don't get them taken care of, you become permanently disabled. And we have corrupt district attorneys. We agree with that sign here. On at the family court. Right on. All of these courts and judges. Yeah.
are homeless. Kids are put into homes where they're being abused, and there's no oversight. They support the mansions of the district attorney. The district attorney of the Sacramento is corrupt. These district attorneys are abusing and prosecuting abusers. They get paid my money. I'm a taxpayer. Right. We're trying to turn the child against the abuser, against the father, and where we're trying to protect our child. And we ask the courts to come in and protect our children, and they deny us our civil rights. I spent $80,000 trying to protect this child. I went through my retirement fund. I went through everything trying to protect her. And when I had no attorney, they took custody of my child. Yes. Uh, it's been 148 days since I've seen her. Five years of going through the courts. I miss her, and they are abusing my child. I call it legal abuse. Thank you. Thank you. So what they're saying is, if you're wealthy, if you're wealthy and rich and have money for lawyers, you're okay. If you're a poor working person, then they're going to take your child away and make you the victim. That's what's going on in California. And this fraud that's going on, these district attorneys, which are supposed to enforce the law, are not enforcing the law. They're victims. They're you know, the district, the district attorney profit. They're the judges. They're profit. No more profit for my child. No more profit for my child. It's not just the court. It's not just the. Um, um, the abusers, not just the fathers, it's the children's attorneys, the mediators, the uh, judges, all of them are involved, and we want an end to it, and we want it now. Yeah. We're no longer willing to accept our children being taken and put into abusive homes. No more. It's no longer acceptable. I've been in the system for eight years, and I have some visitation, but I was the full physical custodial parent of my daughter. The father saw her six days a week. I had her the rest of the time. He was given custody. It's unacceptable, and I have and I don't have any um, I don't have any legal rights to my child. So this is no longer acceptable. That's my game is over, family law. This is game is over. No stop, more stop the, stop, the stop the abusers. Stop the abusers. Stop the abusers. Defend our children. That's what we're talking about. Why is it that there are homeless children in California? Why is it that children are being sent out to the streets or being sent to abusers? We're supposed to be oversight. People are supposed to be responsible for that. And the opposite is taking place. Courts are making money. The court system is making money off of abusers. That's the profit of the court system is being used to abuse people because they make profit off of it. That's what's going on in California. And it's not just with the children who are being abused. It's with injured workers who get injured and then have to fight the courts and the insurance companies. And they can't get lawyers because it's a rigged court system and the judges are corrupt. The judges get money. The judges get money. The judges get money from these companies and then they rule against you and you say, they say you have no rights. And the court's system is rigged against working people, against poor people. That's what's going on in California. If you're a millionaire, if you're a billionaire, everything's fine. Everything's taken care of. If you're a poor person, a working person, you are screwed in this system. I have what's a going question. On here. What's the question? My name is Sherry. And I would like to I find recently the study shows the rate of women incarcerated is three times higher than men. My question to the family court, I want to know how many of these children, what happened to their mother, what happened to those children, their mother incarcerated. I, my question is, I want to know how many of those children come from family court. How many of them come? We have to jail the mediator. We have to jail those judges. Then we have to jail all of them and make it our case. My children, especially my, I lost so much and they could not simply do the simple intervention.
Hudson, and no, for four and a half years, I fired Judge Hockenberg. I told him his service no longer needed because he is a part of the problem, not the part of the solution. I want my child free. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Yeah. and the non-working class women. I am a sheriff correctional officer. I have four children with my common law ex-husband, who I am also a victim of domestic violence. I left. Once you're a victim of domestic violence, if you keep going into the family court system, they will make this about you as the mother. They are stealing the children from the mothers regardless of how good you are, okay? It does not matter. I came forward with my daughter saying that he was sexually molesting her, okay. and they made it about me and used the parent alienation syndrome, which the other female talked about with Richard Gardner. His theories have all been debunked years ago, but the court system is using this to extract money. My county, Santa Clara County, was prosecuted years ago for warehousing children of the Mexican women that were indigent getting pregnant between 15 to 17 years old, and the judges lost their pensions. They just got smarter about it. This has been going on for two decades now. They put your parent alienation syndrome title in a red file, confidential, which nobody gets to know about. They make it about you. They hire these court-appointed attorneys to keep the children from you. They continue to make different excuses. First, I coerced my daughter. Then they turned around and said that um, my kids are telling me what I want to hear. Then it was that my um, my ex-husband's character was being defiled. Then it was my daughter never told anybody anything at all, and they just keep changing the story after story, finding different reasons. Then I cried once in court. Do not cry. You are now crazy. I went to a psychologist. I went to a psychologist. Eight hundred dollars a month. I even had an attorney through this. Okay, they they interlink family court and criminal court together. I had six CPS reports that I didn't file that were apparently on my ex-husband saying that he was abusing the children. The judge overruled my kid's safety from the doctor. Dr. Cuba, credit to you for doing the right thing. She said she would have to uh, go against what the judge said, that she based him getting custody of my kids on my work schedule. Okay, you, can, you can't work in, this, in these counties as a mother either. He can go ahead and put him in whatever daycare he wants to, but I'm not allowed to do that either. They, they just find any reason. Then they hire these court-appointed attorneys and keep this going so that you cannot get your kids back. There is, so you guys know, I found a Family Code Section 3027.5 law. Because once your kids do get taken, they put you to supervise visitation and phone calls with your children and make it about you. Okay? That Family Code Section, it says that you are allowed, you are allowed to have the right to not get supervised visitation and phone calls. At that point, my cousin custody changed. Just two months ago, after two years and three months of not having my kids but supervised visitation, I went to 32% custody. Now they're trying to turn it back again. It's just a constant battle. It does not matter what you do, what you say. They make it about you. Ultimately, they want to break our mothers down mentally, emotionally, and financially. Okay? They will tap you across the board. Assessment fees, motion fees, parking fees, court-appointed attorney fees, extracting money from now. They got smarter middle and upper class women as well who are victims of domestic violence to take this money, leaving the men the litigating power because they usually make more money and never giving us the chance to have our children back and have a mother in their life. Stop corruption! Stop corruption! Yes, he did. He committed suicide and his theories were debunked years ago, but the court system is still using this, this um, series of parent alienation syndrome. I call now parent against system. Parents against the system. We as mothers need to fight for our rights, for our children to have us. How come the men can have rights to have these children in their lives, but we don't? For coming we forward. Gave birth to them. Don't forget yeah. that. Come on. This is all a, this is all a way to steal your children. On top of all that, they want to break you down mentally, emotionally, and financially so they can ultimately steal your children and put them in the foster care system, which the state implemented the program to 24 years old last year. They make about 35 grand a year on each child in the foster care system. Foster parents make about 800 a month. Either way, that's about what 10